Today we're going to take a look at the Atari Lynx. Now the Atari Lynx is interesting in that it was actually one, the first color handheld released in the United States. It was released actually the same year as the Game Boy for $198 or $189. It was pretty expensive considering that the uh, Game Boy was priced at half of that. Now the Lynx had a couple problems. The Lynx was incredibly huge. This unit here is really rather large, um, especially compared to the original Game Boy. It takes six AA batteries. It's um, and those batteries last about four to five hours in it. Color, 16 colors on, on screen at once, a 16-bit handheld actually. Um, the unit's pretty interesting. Had a lot of little arcade stuff for it, um, like Rygar or Stun Runner, a personal favorite. It could do mode seven effects. And um, it had some interesting abilities, like for example, you could flip the screen over and play left-handed if you are so inclined. It also had um, a extremely loud mono speaker and uh, a comm link, kind of like the game link, except no real games actually use that. And uh, it was just huge. This one's a little bit battle damaged, poor thing. Um, a little bit of the white underside of it um, after the velour has, I guess, uh, worn off a little bit. Some interesting things about it. It uses six AA batteries, which go in here. And it use it has a a hidden cartridge slot. The um, cartridges or cards look a little bit like this. They're very flat. This one has a price tag still on the back. And um, it pops in there and you just hide it away in there. The system itself is just really really huge. In comparison, um, some of the other handhelds which are huge that people remember, like the Game Gear, are still not as big as the original Lynx. Larger than Turbo Graphics Express, largest handheld out there, pretty much. Um, kind of terrible D-pad. Um, the buttons are these weird little actual feel like buttons. They're round and they have a little uh, crater in the in them. And then of course there's the option one, um, restart, and option two. Think select and start. And then the ability where you can flip the screen over. Let's go ahead and turn this puppy on for a moment. Up on the top we have uh, volume. And then on the bottom we have brightness. We have uh, Batman Returns in there, which was a um, side-scrolling beat 'em up. Um, interesting thing about the about the Lynx is that it can do hardware mode seven style effects, where it would scale items and such. Kind of interesting. Now, um, like I said, you can flip the screen over for lefty play. Um, yeah horribly bright screen kinda of hard to see at points really kinda of bad you have to mess around with the uh, contrast quite a bit on it but yeah um, you can flip the screen over which is interesting but not really that useful the system itself is actually pretty comfortable just doesn't really fit in pockets very well and um, one thing I like about the Lynx is that it's actually ridiculously loud. The system itself is very, very loud. Um, let's go ahead and pop out that there cartridge a bit. Boink. Yeah, I know, I shouldn't have done that. But there wouldn't, there wouldn't have hurt any save data or anything because honestly, the system itself, very there weren't really any games aside from homebrew stuff that saved. Let's pop Stun Runner in there real quick. Yeah, I was hoping it would show like um, this thing that popped up on some games where it'd say, "Please insert game," which it doesn't. Sometimes, if you if you turn it on without a game in it, it just won't turn on. Now, this is Stun Runner. Stun Runner is interesting in that. Uh, let's see, A or start. Pew. Yeah, try and see see if we can show you that. Up, oh, shoot. The uh, volume. Oh yeah, voice. Stay off the Lots of voice, actually. Yeah, we're, we're totally losing on this because we're not actually moving with it. And it's an interesting 3D game. Watch, we're going to totally lose. But, uh, you can kind of get the idea of what it looks like. 
Oh, I still won. Hmm. Let's see, it was pretty impressive. It had voice, all sorts of stuff going for it. Um, kind of interesting. Now, when the system launched, it was it sold less than five less than five hundred thousand units in the United States. Um, a bit of a flop. Third parties abandoned it. Not not too happy, poor little thing. Um, Atari did try again later on, where they put out the. Um, let me go ahead and put that in there real quick. Where they put out the Lynx Two. Now, the Lynx Two was a little bit sleeker, smaller, definitely. Um, what's kind of interesting about it, whereas it was smaller. Um, lengthwise, it was actually thicker. Used the same amount of batteries, about the same amount of battery life. Um, also added a what I'm going to refer to as the useless button. Oh, um, I put Batman in there again because I thought, why not? Um, the screen is exactly the same, pr same as before, pretty much. Um, got Batman in there. Got two copies of Batman. Ah, uh, interesting story, however, that happened. But it helps to um, illustrate the purposes here. Screen's kind of... Kind of a little bit... Yeah, difficult to see, I suppose. Um, this one's also, of course, has the lefty flip. It's, uh, it's um, not the most responsive buttons in the world. There we go. But it also has what I refer to as the useless button. You can turn off the backlight and be able to not see the game whatsoever. Interesting about it is the Lynx 2 also had a power light to let you know when the battery was about to die, letting you know that your five minutes was up, or actually about actually about five hours. Um, the unit itself actually had better battery life than the Game Gear, which had abysmal battery life. I think it was because of, uh, I just think it was kind of just the way it was designed. Even though the, um, this one, the Game Gear is just an 8-bit master system, and the Atari is actually kind of a 16-bit system. Um, this one had worse battery life. Kind of weird. The um, Lynx launched with California games, a couple other games. There's about um, somewhere around 30, 40 games for the system. A bit of a commercial failure. Um, Atari never really got back into the uh, into the handheld business after that. Then they were sold to the French. <sighs> but yeah, they... Um, Improve the D-pad a bit. This is a tiny little D-pad with little nubs over here to stab into your fingers whenever you use it. And this one's a nice, comfortable D-pad. Um, quite a bit... Yeah. The um, system itself... Well, I like One thing I like about this is that it's, it's got like this rubberized grip up here, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, the serial number's coming out. And it had little straps over here where you could attach it to a... Uh, to a lanyard or something and wear around your neck. Yay! The previous one didn't have anything like that. Kind of a shame because, you know, you could be really, really styling wearing a lynx around your neck. Or you could, like, fall over, hurt yourself, or, like, if you were swimming and had lynx around your neck, you'd probably drown. The system's very heavy. This one is very heavy. It's, they are, in fact, the largest, oh, apparently it was playing itself. Hmm. But they are the largest handhelds. The, um, Atari Lynx, largest handheld. So when somebody says, oh, I don't know about the PSP 3000, it doesn't fit in my pocket, her, 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 her. You can look at them and say, hey, man, the Lynx, the Lynx. People carried this around and they were happy to play California games and Stun Runner and Zerlog Mercenary and Rygar and Toki and a whole bunch of other great arcade titles, which is really what it had. It just had arcade titles for the most part. Kind of an underappreciated little system. Um... And by little, I mean that ironically. That just used a huge amount of batteries and did a lot of stuff kind of, well, wrong. Um, later systems and stuff would improve on things that the Lynx could not. One thing I do like about it, I like the lefty flip. Um, some people are saying, it's like the Wonder Swan, but the Wonder Swan has you turning it on its side. This one, you could turn it around, just play it lefty style. Word. Which actually makes a lot of sense. I'm surprised more companies, <clears throat> Nintendo with your DS, don't do something like that. But yeah, that's the Atari Lynx. It's a huge system, and it's even bigger than some African wildlife. Now, that's the Atari Lynx, and the Lynx 2.